Back in the 90s, Bison Transport's safety record was, pardon the expression, hit and miss. Today, Bison is arguably the safest large motor carrier on the road. Bison has taken home the Truckload Carriers Association's Large Carrier Grand Prize Fleet Safety Award for the past 13 years in a row. The company has won top honours no less than 16 times in all. In this episode, you'll meet one of the architects of Bison's Safety Master Plan, Associate Vice President of Safety and Driver Development, Garth Pitzel. We'll be discussing Bison's operational philosophy, its corporate safety culture, and why safe and satisfied drivers are the company's greatest asset. My conversation with Garth begins right after this. Time is money, and that's why Catscale built the Way My Truck app. Your drivers can complete their entire way without ever leaving the cab. They'll see their weights on their mobile device or tablet, and scale tickets can be automatically emailed to you. With a fleet profile, you can save back office time as well. No driver reimbursements. And you'll have access to report data. Find out more at waymytruck.com. So, Garth, you just made a really great presentation here at HDTX talking about Bison, the safety philosophy, the history of the company. Can you start by telling us uh, where Bison was back in the 90s, where it is today, and how you got there? I started in uh, 94. We were a small, you know, 120, 130 truck company, and uh, we certainly uh, focused on compliance and thought that that was the end all and be all if we were compliant we were going to be safe and uh if you look over the time frame of the late 1990s our results certainly didn't say that that was the way it was our results were uh from a safety perspective weren't very good at all or certainly weren't consistent at, at all they were up we'd have a bad year with a very bad year and then we'd have an okay year so uh, the business says we can't continue on that way. We have to come up with a, a consistent way of ensuring our results and, and at the same time become transform our business to become a safe and compliant company. And that was really uh, one of those fundamental shifts in, in our business in 2000 to say that that's where we needed to get to. Was that an epiphany moment or something you were working toward or everybody saw the writing on the wall? What actually launched that? Well, again, it was it's, it was based on results. The the you know you couldn't, uh, from a perspective of profitability to uh, again insurance. All of a sudden, our insurance par- uh, partner, where you know you have a couple of bad years in a row, there's going to be an increase there. So there was no consistency in our results, so that we could justify that we had the right program in place to to suggest that. It was just a bad year or there was a few things, you know, a couple of accidents changed those results terribly, right? Mm -hmm. We couldn't argue that point. So all of a sudden you were at the mercy of your results. And then next year the insurance company would say, okay, well, you're not going to pay for those results. So we, the business from a sustainability perspective had to change so that we could rely on a consistent bottom line for our business. You said you were compliant, but you weren't safe. How do you spin that one? Well, again, just because you follow the rules doesn't mean your your drivers are operating the truck safely, right? You have 11 hours or 13 hours in Canada to run. You can be totally legal there, but that doesn't mean your driver is operating that vehicle safely. Very true. Exactly. Okay. Uh, So what became Bison's sort of operational philosophy when you went all in on safety? What else did you have to do to pull all that together. Again, it's it's that you have to you have to have everybody in the organization believing it. Like safety isn't just the safety department living and breathing it every day. It is the maintenance department, it's our ops department. It's uh, our payroll department has an effect on that too, making sure the driver's pays right. So it's all of a sudden so the driver's mind is on safe driving, not on all the other issues of what's not going right in his or her life. So every department plays a role in making sure that driver's mind in, is concentrating on 
operating safely each and every mile that they run every day. And I do know from experience, I've been to your shops in Mississauga, Ontario, uh, the maintenance team really emphasizes the condition of the vehicles. The drivers shouldn't have to worry about that either. No, absolutely. And, and, and again, that, that plays a, a big role in the, you know, and I'll, and I'll say this, you know, a driver has to worry about lots of things and then they still have to worry about their home life. And so that plays a role, making sure a driver gets home consistently. Mm -hmm. and, and even the family understanding the obligations to what we expect from our drivers. Our, the only obligation we want our drivers to live by is for them to make sure they're home safely from each and every trip. That is the absolute requirement that has to occur. And what would you say were the biggest steps over the years in, in getting to that safety philosophy? I mean, you've done a lot, but was there any two or three things that really made a difference? The most important thing when we talk about, you know, the, 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 the culture is, you know, we could talk about the protection of our assets, which most people think are the truck, the trailer, and the customer's freight. Or you could talk about the protection of people. Mm -hmm. We talk about the protection of people because when that driver does make it home safely from that trip, well, guess what? So it's the tractor, the trailer, and the customer's freight. Plenty of that happens. So, so, so you get the result that you want, right? So, you know, we were fortunate that, you know, again, we, we personalized it. It was about making sure that driver had the necessary skills to make it home safely. That's our responsibility as a business. The driver's responsibility to the business is to make sure you use those skills in every mile they run for us to make sure they make it home to their families safely. So once they understand that, they're going to come along for the ride. You know, as I say, we're fortunate we have 2,200 drivers drinking the Kool-Aid and believing and supporting it, yeah. right? And, and it really comes down to, to them living and breathing it. And then you add the maintenance department, then you add the operations doing the right thing for the driver and payroll and et cetera, et cetera. Could another carrier copy your blueprint or is it something unique to the bison culture that makes it different? Well, I, I, it, it absolutely is the culture that, that, that keeps it alive and, and, and us, uh, you know, delivering on it every day. Absolutely, a company could be like we're very open and honest about what we do and how we do it, uh, but yet they just can't figure out that right mix. Mm -hmm. And really, the mix is just talking about the protection of people. All about the people. It's all about people. Yeah. And once, and once you have that, you you now you're going to have some naysayers that that don't have the right attitude that might not fix fit into that mold, that's okay, right? You know, we've, we've had the few people that uh, believe that uh, running uh, more miles every day is more important than them. And, and it comes out in their performance and in their results, and some of them we choose to say, you, you have to leave. But most of them, you have those conversations and you remind them of their obligations and they, they all of a sudden go, you're right. And then it comes down to attitude, mm -hmm. right? So as long as that driver has the right attitude, now every once in a while there's a driver that doesn't have the right aptitude, they just will never be that true professional driver and we have to cut them loose. But most of them are trying to do the right thing and they just need reminders of it. And that's whether it's an entry level driver or a driver that's got 30 years of experience. They um, I, I think the probably the best thing that we we do is again it's it's that job of our safety counselors to determine one of two things is that conversation or the event that they're talking about is it just a coaching event that needs to occur or does further training need to occur and if training needs to occur that's fine we do the training but then they come back for that coaching event to mm -hmm. remind them of the training they just received. Okay, so you follow up with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's we did that about six years ago, somewhere in there, where we we always sent them for training, but we didn't have that reminder that going back to the safety counselor to have that coaching event. So we we changed that, and again, we've seen some great results from that. You've made obviously substantial investments in training. I think you said during the presentation that some significant majority of the drivers you hire 
wouldn't pass your, your initial hiring criteria without some follow-up training. Uh, what, what do you spend on that, if you don't mind my asking? Well, you know, my driver development department, that budget is, is over $4 million a year, which is the, the training department. So, so there's a significant investment made in it. But, uh, you know, again, it's, you know, as I stated earlier, whether that driver has, has zero miles under his or her belt or has, a, you know, a couple of million, you can always learn. You can always improve. And I think that that's the, the you know, you know, going back to my comment about the safety counselors, I, I look at that as I keep saying to him, well, that person across the street, across the desk from you, you know their strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just work with the person we know instead of getting rid of that person and bringing in a person we don't know? Good point. Right? So, and again, sometimes that you just have to, uh, the risk is too high. You can't keep that person. But... It, you know, if you look at 10 years ago, somewhere in there, that was really those conversations that had to repeat them lots, mm -hmm. right? And, and then when a safety counselor says, I'm just dealing with bad news every day. It, and that was, a, that was a, one of those fundamental blows to the, to the stomach that you just, hold on a sec here. And again, it's just viewpoint. So, you know, I sat... I, you know, I thought about it. The next day I phoned, phoned that counselor back and said, hold on a sec. This driver, when's the last time you talked to this specific driver? He goes, about six months ago. He said he was in your office every week for a period of time, wasn't he? Isn't that good news? It's just perspective. <laughs> so all of a sudden we then changed our, our, our hey, we got to identify it to the drivers. We have to identify it to our safety counselors of so we give that information out to our drivers that have had a period of time where they're had a few issues that they're now going five weeks, 10 weeks, 15 weeks without an issue. Keep up the good work. Yeah, yeah for sure. Right? It's just no different than a driver that had uh, following distance issues. He was, we, we had lowered the parameters for our following distance. We made it a little tighter and... You know, the driver was, uh, you know, I hadn't seen him for a while, so I'm in the hallway and said, hi, how are you? And he goes, uh, good. And he goes, it's falling time. Still, it's, it's, it's just, you know, and he, and, he, and he was frustrated. And I said, I just put out my hand and I said, thank you. And he goes, for what? I said, you were having over 50 of them a week. You're not having between two and five a week. That's success. Yes, we got a little ways to go, yep. but that is success. You're doing a You've done a great job. Hmm. And the best story about that is he came back to my office the next week. He says, I went home, had dinner with my wife that night, told her about that. And she was amazed at the approach and the attitude of the business going, you're doing a good job. Right? Like she, and, and again, he had a different approach. All of a sudden he had a different attitude about it wasn't this, oh my God, I'm, I'm trying, but it's just not working. Instead, it, he, he was doing a good job for us. Just had to improve a little bit more. And I think those are, the, those are the things that make it so important is not only do you have the training, but you gotta reinforce it. You gotta reinforce those conversations. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just perspective. Yeah. And you gotta get, because that's a good news story. That was even though he's on the list every week of having two to five. This is HDT Talks Trucking. I'm Jim Park. I'm speaking with Garth Pitzel, the Associate Vice President of Safety and Driver Development at Winnipeg, Manitoba-based Bison Transport. When we come back, we'll learn about the single most impactful fleet safety policy at Bison, the right to decide. SmartWay verified double coin truck tires support the sustainability goals of the transportation industry. To find a dealer or truck stop near you, visit www.doublecointires.com. The smart money is on DoubleCoin. When it comes to onboarding a driver and the training that they need, uh, your own experience, are you better off hiring somebody fairly fresh out of school? or somebody with a middling amount of experience, five to 10 years, or are you veterans? 
Which are the easier ones to bring along to the bison way of thinking? That's a double, <laughs> double-edged sword question. <laughs> um, and, and, and again, each has their advantages and disadvantages. I, you know, I'll, again, I'll describe a conversation with, 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 with a couple of my instructors on road tests. You know, five years ago, six years ago, you know, you get the, the, them saying, this guy's got 20 years experience, he can't do a pre-trip. He's a bad driver. And I go, no. 20 years ago, were we teaching, educating drivers on proper pre-trips at most companies? I'm not talking about buys, and I'm talking about most companies. Mm -hmm. The industry wasn't doing that. Just because he has 20 years of experience or she has 20 years of experience doesn't mean they know how to do it properly. So you have to, so I, I, that took a little bit of time to get a few instructors to think a little differently when it comes to, to that, mm -hmm. but we got them to see the light. Uh, but that's the advantage and disadvantage of, of every group. You have that really experienced driver that might not have been trained. So you do, you can't take it for granted that they know how to do it. A lot of companies do. Right, yeah. absolutely. So, so that's where, you know, I talked about that assessment tool. I think that's the future of, you know, having a better way to assess the strengths and weaknesses of every driver and so that you can deal with and train on their weaknesses. Yep. I think that's going to be, you know, and we're already training drivers so differently in our business. Not every driver gets trained the same. So that, you know, was one of those long-term goals of you have to be able to train on the specific needs of each and every driver. Well, we're there, but we're going to get better at it with it, with this assessment tool. And do you take drivers right out of school? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What do you think of the current state of the driver training industry at this point with the kind of graduates you're getting? Well, I'm going to say this, you know, uh, I'll say MELT raised the standard. They had a co higher competency level coming to us than pre-MELT. That, that's for sure. Okay, that's good. I, I don't think that it's anywhere close to giving the keys for the truck to that driver to have him go to New York City. <laughs> that was the old days. Right, absolutely, but 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 I still think there's a long way to go, and I think that it, again, it it's a great start. Um, but companies have to invest in training beyond melt. You and, and again, that's what we're we're certainly doing that, and yeah. and uh, you know we we do about a hundred and between a hundred and twenty five and a hundred and fifty a year. Okay, and uh, there's big cost to that. Yep. And I guess you you tailor that training to what they need rather than just a blanket. Here's our entry level program. Sure, and that, and that's where again we we have that training on competency. It's it, yeah. we 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 use time like we believe you know we've it's about ten weeks uh, with an in cab instructor. There are drivers that take fourteen weeks. Probably yeah. some who manage it in seven. Right. Each is a little different, yeah. right? Yeah. But. It's based on competency, and I think that, and again, we used the, uh, again, you'll remember the days of the Canadian Trucking Human Resource Council when we did the competency back then. Well, it's been redone several times, and now with Trucking HR Canada. So we're, we, we absolutely believe in supporting that and, and, and have used competency as the, as the way to uh, base our training programs on. The one thing I'll wind up the interview with was a, policy, I guess you brought in some years ago, called the deci uh, the right to decide. Yeah. Explain that to us. Yeah, that's, uh, again, uh, you, you know, it, it's... It seems like it should be self-explanatory. <laughs> really, I mean, it really, pilots have that decision, don't they? It, it really does. It, it's, uh, you know, again, it's one of those things that, I, and again, I, I chuckle over because it's, it's so simplistic, it hurts, but yet it's not. Right. The, it, and again, it, it, the right to decide is applies to everybody in our business, not just our professional drivers. It's to our technicians, our office people. If you're about to perform a task, it's your responsibility. And you have the responsibility and the authority to discontinue it if you feel it's unsafe to proceed for a driver is to decide when to drive and when not to drive. And, and so, um, again, we've been we've been blessed on. Um, 
those three words of, of how impactful it can be to a program. And our safety program, again, when it was compliance based, number one reason our drivers were leaving our business or not coming to our business was because of our safety program. Today, it's the number one reason drivers come is because of that right to the side. Our drivers quote that drivers from other companies, the reason they come to us is because of that. Um, and our, and our drivers, when potential new, we have 40, what is it, about 44% of the hires we have are referrals right now. Um, right to decide is one of the things they talk about. And so it's, it's really been a, a, a blessing from a, you know, um, a three simple words, but how impactful it can be to a program and to the continued success and, and, and people supporting it with, throughout our business, right? You can, you know, I can give 10 hours of training to, to our drivers on safe operation of truck. And then if operations just says, just get the damn load there, what's the driver going to try and do? They're just going to try and do their job and get the load there. So it's everybody supporting the right to decide from our maintenance department to our ops department to, our, again, as I said, our payroll to make sure that our drivers are concentrating on the right thing. And when they do decide, they'll be taken seriously. So if they're not going to go, there's no repercussions? No, no. no. And, and again, it's, you know, most people think the, our right to decide is a weather policy. Right now, if the weather's bad, you just don't drive. Well, no, it's much more than that. It's on the condition of the equipment, it's the condition of the roads. It is for weather, but most importantly, it's the condition of the driver. Just because that driver has that 11 or 13 hours to drive today, doesn't mean they should be driving. Yeah. Or they get up, they're driving. Now, all of us have had situations where halfway through the day, you get a headache, you're not feeling well, and you, you, know, you try to plug through it. Well, it's totally different for a person behind the wheel or for that technician that's working on a truck. Yeah. Right? So if they need to remove themselves, they have the right to do so. That applies to the shop personnel as well? And Absolutely. Anybody in the company? Absolutely. Hmm. Amazing. It is, uh, you know, again, one of those um, things that, uh, again, um, it, it is simplistic, but yet so impactful. And it's, again, one of those reasons that, you know, again, I'm just going to talk from a driver perspective in this, uh, you know, our 2,200 drivers are choose to follow and is because of that, right? They believe in it. They know we believe in it. And at the end of the day, it's about making sure that they get home and they, they, and they need to be accountable for their actions. Well, I wish you another 13 years of uh, being the safest fleet in North America. It's probably within your grasp to do that. That's an amazing story. Well, I, I, again, I'll, I'll say this. It's, 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 again, a privilege to, to be able to represent Bison at, at these events and, and celebrate our program and have it recognized. But if we don't win the grand prize one day, I'll be the first on stage clapping for the carrier that has uh, done that because the industry has gotten better and that's, sure. that, yeah. that's an important thing too, right? And so, um, I, 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 again, it's not, it, that's not the reason we continue to strive for improvements. Uh, as I said, you know, we're talking about those assessment tools and things like that. We're doing it for the right reasons so our people make it home safely. And the benefit is we win a hell of a lot of awards. That's not the goal. <laughs> that's not going to pay the rent though. Right. But yeah. Right. It's, that's never been the outcome. Yep. Or the never the, been the reason why we went to that. It was to win awards. It's been a true blessing that we won a lot. Kareth Pitzel, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Good seeing you. Great conversation. Mm -hmm.